After five days of back and forth dialogue, big meetings and small meetings, of talking and eating, and even washing the dishes together, the conference was over. And at a public meeting on the Stanford University campus, the whole group came together to report on their efforts and to sign the document they had worked so hard to achieve. Dr. Harold Saunders, who had done a superb job of facilitating the conference, began the report. Governments cannot do the whole job themselves. Increasingly, change comes from the bottom up and not from the top down. Increasingly, governments find themselves paralyzed to do what they ought to do. And the Arab-Israeli peace process is a very good example of a conflict in which political authorities seem paralyzed, una unable to do what they need to do. Small wonder, then, that groups like this gather. And small wonder that people come together in contexts like this in order to attempt to change that relationship from the inside out. Now, this week, while experiencing this, we started on uh, Monday afternoon, Tuesday morning, by saying that perhaps our job was to design an alternative peace process. We have Secretary Baker's e efforts, with the governments in the Middle East, and we all hope they succeed. On the other hand, we are not certain. Even if they succeed in taking a first step, it is our conviction that they will not be able to stay the course unless there is political support in the relevant body's politic. Therefore, there is a need for the kind of dialogue that goes on in groups like this between like-minded people. And by like-minded, I simply mean like-minded not in terms of their view of the issues necessarily, but like-minded in their commitment to the proposition that their peoples have had enough of conflict and feel that it's time to move beyond conflict to peace. That is the like-mindedness in a group of this kind. This week, somewhere after our Tuesday use of the phrase an alternative peace process, uh, we really decided, sort of implicitly, that we didn't want to think of what we were doing as an alternative, but rather as a complement to what governments are doing. And in the course of the week, we have invented a new phrase, which tonight we proudly offer to the uh, field of international relations and uh, public affairs. We have invented the phrase, a public peace process. Now this is not an alternative to the governmental peace process. It is a complement to it, but it is nevertheless giving a name to the kind of interaction <clears throat> that is planned in dialogue within a group like this. It says that there are interactions between peoples across national boundaries. They can contribute to peace if properly designed. They can make a difference if, the, if they build a relationship and foster the kind of interactions that dispel misperception and distrust and lead to the ability to think and work together. What we did this week was to think and work together. We produced a common product, and that product is entitled a framework for a public peace process. I, commend the phrase to you for your thought. Uh, we felt that giving a name to what is being done so broadly between Arabs and Israelis would give dignity and status and purpose to a disparate collection of interactions that do go on. But now perhaps if thought of as part of the normal conduct of relationships between peoples can in itself be designed to make a difference if governments fail. Thank you very much.